Okay. Hi everybody, my name is Jessica Holyfield. I'm a professional dancer, professional dance choreographer, and dance educator based out of the southeast of the United States. And we're taking a look at a new group today. It is called Number I, and this is their track, Goat. This was released, I believe, in the very beginning of January at the time that I'm recording this. And this is their dance performance music video. Here's how I heard about them. I follow a couple people who are part of the filming of this video. And so it got me very intrigued because I think there's another group from Japan that I plan on taking a look at today, funnily enough because of their affiliation with D-League. So I was like, let's just add them to the list. I wanna check it out. And I'm very open to looking at groups from all over the world. And I know for me, I've, I've looked at D-League from Japan, so I'm very familiar with um, just being exposed to Japanese culture within the dance realm in that particular way. And then in other ways, of course. So, but this is really fun. This is like my first, technically my first J-pop, equivalence analysis that I'm doing on the channel, which is really cool. So I think there's really nothing else left to do except check it out and just give it a whole vibe. Let's go. on the color grading of this. Fun. That was fun. Okay. All right. Let's stop. I would say I thought, yes, yeah, what I thought. Riahata. So, and Jonathan, this guy, I believe is the one that I follow or one of the accounts that I manage. Um, they follow him and, and I clock this and I'm like, oh my gosh. I look at dance content, let's look at it together. So that was really cool. I mean, Ria Hada's choreo always is a vibe, always is a vibe. So does not does not shock me at all. This was really cool. Um, I also know too, cause something that I was very curious about with this group is how they got so many views so quickly for their debut track. And when I went to go look, cause I go to like look and see um, like their age and stuff. And I believe a lot of them, they're like, they're chilling 26 to 28 range. So they're like vibing in my age range. So for me, whenever you have like adult adults <laughs> kind of pursue this line of work, you, um, do they have like this cutesy factor about them? Maybe not quite, but, uh, but when it comes to like, I'm more comfortable as an individual who views and analyzes their content. I have more confidence behind the fact that they have more control over um, the choices that they make. You know, I think conceptually, I think it's kind of my thing. Because I know sometimes when you, when we look at like really, really young groups, specifically ones that have like teen teens, like not even teetering to adult age, like 16, 15, 
those get really dicey really fast specifically based on what kind of concept you're going with here i mean they're grown men so it doesn't really i mean they could do whatever concept they wanted and for me there'd be a subconscious like they are gonna have more control over that than like somebody who's like 15 16 do you kind of you kind of see what i'm saying of course there's things with the companies and this out and the other but all that to say i was so curious as to how they got so many views i think a lot of the members because when i went to look like i said to look at their ages and stuff um, a lot of them came from another group, um, and I don't know any of that information. I don't know anything with contracts, this, that, and the other, but we, we are operating at a trio, and it looks like at least two of the members, I think, were a part of this previous group. I can't name it at the top of my head. Remember, I did like a super, super quick thing just so I'm kind of aware of what's going on. I'm going to turn on my close. Oh, they're auto-generated. We'll see if it actually picks up something, but... Mm -mm. So yeah, English is not gonna help us. But let's go ahead and talk through the video. This is super dope. Um, and I may even check out the music video while while we're here hanging out just to see the more visual, cinematic visual. I like the push do 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 do, and I really like with the with the choice. Um, notice that the type of filter that that was used it really gives this vibe of that he's he's just speeding through the um the building which is kind of cool and i think it's just kind of how they have it filtered it's like this um oh there's a there's a name for it it's like a cross it's like a zoom it's something and there's a filter on it and i really like it and the color grading's really nice he builds it up ddd notice he maintains his down bounce on that really nice catches it this is nice too they switch it off i really do appreciate with like one takes because they do require a certain level of logistics in your environment and so seeing it whenever they like do these pass offs they're way harder to get than just doing like a masking transition and that's more harder on the editor's side when it comes to filming it it's not it's not as tricky as making sure everyone's in the right place and i think there's another part where i really noticed that that right there that was like a flash transition that was nice now having this here driving down dune 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 zooming they keyframed it over to the side to make it more dramatic do i think that they really like lean this i think we could definitely with all three of them notice that they're not all facing the same direction with the chest and that can affect the angle that we are showcased with um so that would just be, I mean, regardless of where the camera is, notice these two guys kind of have it, but he's really focusing, he's projecting his chest more towards us. So we don't quite see this type of angle or the push of the isolation to the side. So that would be my in general note. Also, I'm not expecting all of this to look like the exact same. They're not really giving off that type of energy. I feel like they want to make sure that they're definitely on the um, their timings more in check. But because it's a trio, they I think they're really pushing individuality on this more so than, than just showing that they know how to move. Not a we're, we're one of our niches of synchronicity is kind of what it's coming across as, which is absolutely fine. I like that energy there. Um, but notice that how they kind of transition out of this groove with the footwork um it 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 definitely could have been a little bit more refined ding 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 i know he was projecting more to the front so i think he had to cheat it a little bit and so cheating means that you have to modify a movement transition to get to a particular foot or placement without sacrificing the integrity of the sequence you just did. So in this case, I feel like it did look a bit unrefined, at least in that transition, but I understand why he made the choice he did. He goes it down. Now this is a great example. Look at the timing. It's still the one take, so they have to go around and then they're about to come back into frame. So this is a really nice logistics thing they did and I love the color grade shifts. Good chance that they had these such a different lights. And I think having white as a neutral is chef's kiss for this and this is a very different environment i love how you brought it around and go bump bump nice with the double now from here they hit it and the notice right here they're kind of kind of vibing it out they're transitioning in that spot they're not doing the same thing but they're trying to hit the same dynamic which i appreciate having this energy here dee 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 dee. personally for me whenever people do that i wish that we had a little bit more direction influence with the isolation of the chest using that to give it more leverage than just doing arms i think that's my big note whenever i do see that when you do like very viral moves that would just be my general note um having it with the little pull is super nice hitting it down boom and that was nice having this energy here. That uh, dee 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 dee. I like where it goes big and then it goes a little bit a little. Nice to see them all showcase different personalities for sure. Goes dee dee dee. Da, 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 da. Love that. Panning it around. We're still in a one take. Love it. 
Yeah. Now, love the fact that, like, they had to be just, like, um, their placement. Here's something to think about, too. It is, mm, you have to be very mindful of where this camera is going. So I have, I have firsthand experience of doing one takes, but um, it is definitely on a much smaller scale with not as big of a crew. I have, like, a minimal, minimal, like, they only have like two, three people involved outside of those who are dancing. Here, whatever this crew, good chance that it's not just one person. They probably have a team of individuals that are helping with the lighting, the rigging, the um, the gaff, right? So like the assistants, like there's so much happening. So whenever you pan over, it's not that simple to just be like a pan over. We have to make sure that everybody's on the same page of how the shot's going to work. Because if they're not, you can catch somebody accidentally in the shot because they may not have been aware. Oh my gosh. We're not just staying over here for this take. We're panning it over. So there's a lot of communication that's required, not only from the dancers. They have to make sure they don't overshoot their spot, but also from the team involved. They have to make sure they're all in the right place in order for that shot to get taken and we don't have to take 15 takes because of a logistics problem, not because they got the moves wrong. You know, So there's a lot of moving pieces with, with stuff like this, regardless if it's only three people or 17 people, right? So it's always impressive whenever you do pull off a one take or like a really long excerpt where you get to showcase different uh, location opportunities and creatively use that um, because some people just don't realize that you do have to make sure that whenever you pan over the camera guy whoever I don't know if it's like they have like a body a body camera that they're using you know where like it's attached and the gimbal is them because <laughs> Lord there's some devices like that uh, or maybe they're just using like a simple crane gimbal or something not sure but I'm really impressed I'm always impressed and I always respect when one takes are done in concepts like this because it just feels like there was a lot of communication and there was a lot of creative like oh let's try this and it worked and then they vibe with it I just I always appreciate that and then a secondary note to notice is notice that the lighting is subtly different. It's a little bit darker here in comparison to having that double light over there. So that's another thing too is like the, the guys on the team have to make sure that it's well lit enough to where you can edit it. Because if it's like super dark, it's it's harder. It's harder to manage in the software. It's possible. It's harder. So the, the goal too is to be able to set up your lighting to where you don't have to do like a ton to it. Um, and you get to fun, have fun with other things, you know, you do, do the hard work there and then you can make it easier on yourself later. But then sometimes you're like, ah, I'll just figure it out. You know, like that doo -doo -doo. I like that throw and the transition with the two forward. I like that. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Love how he's building up with the tone, elevating the energy. That's another state too. So there's a good chance. I may have just been those three and the guy with the camera and everybody else is like probably like hiding over here <laughs> they're like in la la land over here possibly we don't know um that would be what my gut tells me but look they open it boom beautiful masking effect so it turns that it's white love it this is probably where the team was <laughs> i don't know but then now we're in a completely different room look at the setup of the lights that's amazing they also have a light in the back but not and not only that they're gonna have lights in the front because if you just have the light in the back with no light showcasing the front it's you're just looking at silhouette so you there's so much happening here that you have to make sure it's not on camera but it's close enough where you can at least like shine the light on them and it doesn't lose the integrity of the other types of lights that you're wanting to work with so this is a nice little focal point choreo boom 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 this reminds me of um, um oh my gosh uh red nose like a red nose it gives off that energy a little bit so it's like but it's more of a variant and they're digging it boom boom i like that that's fun and they stop it boom my my note here is notice that one of them he kind of overshot with the elbow and then the other is just kind of knocked so that would be my in general note digging through I think whenever you do focal point choreography is where you can really try to fight for synchronicity. Um, and synchronicity is different than unison, even though they're doing the, like they're, they're trying to do the same thing. But the synchronicity side stems from you want your timing to be the same, but as, as well as your range of your movement. So not only the content needs to be the same, but how you get from point A to point B, the transition of the move between each move should matter in how far and how long it takes you to get there because that's where you're going to get that squeaky clean refinement and for me i feel like out of all of the sections here that would have worked the most efficiently in this section um but kind of digging through is really nice the transition is nice it's fun and then it's cool to have the lights kind of flicker like that it's super dope and then the with the umbrella that was cool now this part right here it it is interesting that we're kind of that we're hitting notice that with one of our guys he's leaning back that is making it feel a little bit more relaxed the other two it genuinely just feels like 
we're just kind of kicking in place and we're not allowing our torso any leverage to really make that a vibe like I feel like the vibe got lost in the torso I, except for my guy who's over on our right side their left side um so my two over here that would just be my general note is to add even though he has an umbrella adding some sort of leverage with the torso as they do that but keeping everything else the same is going to make it look more laid back and playful not we're doing a move to transition you know so that's my general note for this little bit but I like this hit hit and then boom boom this is this is like <laughs> I do like that it's subtle it's a little gimmicky go go I'm assuming this is like a goat like maybe a physical goat but I know that they're going off the acronym greatest of all time which for me it may bleed into because they all have history maybe working under different groups or the same group and they're kind of branched off into their own thing possibly I don't know um you guys let me know because I know some of you hopefully this makes your way to um if you're a fan of these individuals or the groups that they were affiliated with I'm very much looking forward to hearing more insight regarding that so I can be more um more understanding so in the future because i mean for me whenever i start a group i tend to want to try to keep up uh just kind of seeing their growth and seeing what gets refined whether some concepts that work what concepts are like oh that's interesting that we chose that you know it's nice to see the life the lifeline of a group but all that to say i'm very much looking forward to the insight that you guys may provide for me in terms of what what encompasses this group what they're known for things like that i'm very much looking forward to that um but seeing this here bringing it down to the blackout this was cool, boom, nice little accent there. Switching it through, boom, and I love that little accent with that with the hit and then how they're representing the levels. And they're bringing it up, love the lighting on that. Yep, doom, 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 doom. Sliding it through, really nice. Yeah, this whole thing is fun. Like that little section was nice, definitely. It did give me, I mean, I know it was Riyahadu Koreagafta, it did give me Kenja's vibes, but it's, but it wasn't saying that Kinjas is the only one that does this kind of style. But this this segment right here, I don't know. Let me see. It did give me appearance that they were trying to do it like a cannon. Like that move as a cannon. But because they didn't quite showcase all three of them doing it like very, very clean together. The first time we saw that move, it was difficult to catch this time. So that would be my note is that if that is in fact a cannon, meaning that one person starts the, the, the footwork rotations, but then somebody else joins the first section when the other guy's on the second section. So it kind of goes like one, two, Okay, I can't do it with my fingers, but you, I hope you understand what I'm saying. Um, it would it would feel a little bit more clear and intentional because the transition out of it, it didn't feel as it didn't feel as clear, so it did feel kind of muddled. Um, but I love the build and the energy there with the shoe and then building it back in. It kind of elevates the energy of this compared to what they did earlier. It's fun. Love that. Bring it down. Love that. Boom and bringing it up to drop it. Really fun. Swishing it up and they throw. That was a freaking sick transition masking effect because what's nice is they go from, they take it, they pan it up, and then they start with this one, they start it low to bring it up. So it feels like all one rotation, like we just got flipped on our head. Those never get old to me, <laughs> especially depending on what they're doing. And I just, I like the fact that they're in front. I like the wave out here. This is what I'm talking about. Notice all three of them are kind of riding with the torso going towards the back of that chest. It makes them more laid back. And I like that. I'll get to kind of do their own thing. Love that boom here, building it in. Boom here, boom. Now I noticed one of them dropped his arms a little bit too early there. I think if all of them hit it and then they all dropped around the same rate, that would definitely be a lot um, cleaner. It would make us appreciate the individual moments more if they were much cleaner on the sections that were supposed to be deemed unison and in sync. But it still go back to my previous point. They really do not give off the energy of like they're trying to strive. And it could be because of their fits and it could be because of how they started and how they're finishing. And a lot of their moments really deem off of their individuality. And I really do appreciate that. Um, it's just nice to see. Uh, but the same thing keeps in mind of like whenever you do want to showcase moments where they're like really wanting to show a very refined style like that section where the lights changed and we were talking about that canon um those moments would shine so much more if we really focused um on the cleanliness of that and that part was significantly cleaner than some of the other grooves that they were doing but it's more of like a torso thing than a um 
than an incompetency thing, if that makes sense. I feel like minor refinement and you got yourself a really, really great trio, like truly in the, in the dance department. But they're still pretty good. I love that ending where we kind of slow it down to bring it back. Because right here, notice the range is the same. Range meaning like they go from point A to point B, but how they're carrying it slightly different. That's a beautiful example of I if we saw like more of the timing right, but we had these moments, it would be absolutely like, it would be, it'd be amazing. But this was so very, very good. But I am looking forward to seeing their dance development as a trio in some of their other discography that they will be releasing in the future. But that was a really fun ending. They go and they step, same feet, and they walk. Long and away, totally fine. I mean, yeah, the only choreographer that's on this was Rita Hada. It was super cool. Love it. This was really nice. What a great introduction into into uh, the potential of there's there's a really good chance that they may be a really good intro into some other really good groups uh, that are either adjacent or connected in some way. So I'm definitely looking forward to seeing uh, y'all's feedback on this as well as um, their future work. This was great. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you want to see more of Number I, or if you want to see more of J-pop or just uh, dance analysis in general, I have so much of it on YouTube, but I also have a Patreon that has everything early release, including this video. And uh, if that's something that interests you at all, you can go check it out over there. But I love discussions both on YouTube and Patreon. Both are super awesome. And I always look forward to meeting new people and new uh, fans of groups such as this and getting to know and understand a different facet of the industry that is so different than my own. And it makes me really excited to uh, be able to partake that with with others so once again i am jess and i will catch you on the flip side bye